guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. Hope everyone's having a great day. TYTnetwork.com slash go. Jordan's going to be coming on here for a little bit to talk about Rick Perry and all the disasters that's going on with Donald Trump. But I wanted to get a really quick story in because Jordan actually tweeted about this and I thought it was incredibly fascinating. Um, and, and actually not even that fascinating, just par for the course for the New York Times and for the establishment media. They have such a massive turnover between these establishment papers, all people that think alike, all people that think within their own box, all people that are insiders with the Clinton campaign or were insiders with the Clinton campaign, insiders with Washington, people who aren't the Glenn Greenwalds of the world or the David Sirotas who go to more obscure papers. They're cozy in their little establishment bubble. So Politico, Politico's Glenn Thrush, who if you recall was implicated in the WikiLeaks along with a variety of other Politico and New York Times reporters, has just been hired by the New York Times. Huzzah! Politico chief political correspondent Glenn Thrush is joining the New York Times to cover the White House, the newspaper confirmed Monday. Over the past eight years, Thrush has emerged as one of Politico's standout journalists, most recently writing a 13,000 word dive into the pivotal moments of the 2016 election. He joined Politico in July 2008 after covering Hillary Clinton's unsuccessful presidential bid while at New York's Newsday. He reported deeply on Congress, the Obama White House, and three presidential elections. Thrush also serves as a senior staff writer for Politico magazine and was an author of Politico ebooks during the 2012 race. At the Times, Thrush will be reunited with former Politico stars Jonathan Martin, Alexander Burns, and Maggie Haberman, whom he recently interviewed for his podcast. If you recall, Glenn Thrush is the person who sent a paragraph of his article to the Hillary Clinton campaign before he published it. I will read from this the Hill this Hill article that goes over what actually happened and what was implicated in the WikiLeaks. A new WikiLeaks email, that's not new anymore, but a new WikiLeaks email from him to the Clinton campaign, John Podesta, is shown shows this, and this is what he said. Because I have become a hack, I will send you the whole section that pertains to you, Thrush writes to Podesta. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. Tell me if I effed up anything. So he knows that this is a hacky thing to do. He knows that this isn't the right journalistic thing to do. He knows that he shouldn't be sending a whole section that pertains to John Podesta and the Hillary Clinton campaign to her campaign for approval. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. But for some reason, Glenn Thrush doubled down and said, got extremely defensive once this was leaked, if you guys recall. Little unnerving, but fascinated to be in the middle of a grinned up, self-serving shitstorm push, uh, pushed by fake in the bag partisan media. My goal in emailing Podesta to get him to confirm stuff I had from lesser sources. It worked. Nobody controls my stories but me. Troll on. Well, I beg to differ because you asked for his approval before you published a story. So how does that give you the final approval? You're asking the source for their approval before publishing. That's way worse than before having an interview with someone agreeing to terms on what you're going to discuss. I don't even like that. But this is way worse. Sending an already completed, written out article, piece of that article, to the source. And this Hill article actually says, Glenn Thrush attempted to fact check a complex story that's a common practice by reporters far and wide and shouldn't be condemned out of hand, but the fact check should never be included, should have never included text from the story itself. I completely agree. Uh, Thrush knows this and by his own admission when he asked Podesta not to share or tell anyone about it. Um, so I, I completely agree with that. Yes, J Jordan and I, or at least me, who I'm just doing really commentary, I have the luxury of not having to break stories and not having to worry about access. And that's the beauty of the Young Turks is we're able to synthesize the information that's already presented and give you guys our honest take. And I think that we're pretty correct and often right in, in these situations. So we don't, we have the luxury of not ha being able to worry about access. I understand that Glenn Thrush does, but sending 
an entire portion of your article to a campaign beforehand, that's beyond the pale. And uh, this Hill article continues. Mark Leibovich, a senior reporter for the New York Times, was also caught engaging in quote approval from the Clinton campaign. No apology, no reprimand. And look at, listen to the Times um, policy from 2012 on quote approval. Full memo included at the end of this post, but the New York Times is drawing a clear line against the practice of news sources being allowed to approve quotations and stories after the fact. This practice, known as quote approval, puts so much control over the content of journalism in the wrong place, the executive editor Jill Abramson told me in an interview. This is from the Times, though. Uh, we need a tighter policy. So starting now, we want to draw a clear line on this. Citing Times policy, reporters should say no if a source demands, as a condition of an interview, that quotes be submitted afterwards to the source or press aid to review, approve, or edit which is exactly what, uh, what Mark Leibovich did, and it is, in essence, what Glenn Thrush did by sending an entire, entire uh, section of an article to, the, New York, to uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign and to John Podesta. Secondly, Glenn Thrush is joining his BFF, Maggie Haberman, at the New York Times. Maggie Haberman was, as revealed by WikiLeaks as well, on a document as listed as a friendly source and was also essentially a plant for the Hillary Clinton campaign uh, in some areas and where they would plant stories. I will read um, from The Intercept. One January 2015 strategy document designed to plant stories on Clinton decision-making process about whether to run for president singled out reporter Maggie Haberman, then of Politico, now covering the election for the New York Times, as a friendly journalist who teed up stories for them in the past and never disappointed them. Nick Merrill, the campaign press sec secretary, produced the memo according to the document metadata. That strategy document pl plotted how Clinton aides could induce Haberman to write a story on the thoroughness and profound introspection involved in the Clinton decision-making process. The following month, she was when she was at the Times, Haberman published two stories on Clinton's vetting process. In this instant, instance, Haberman's stories were more sophisticated, nuanced, and even somewhat more critical than what the Clinton memo envisioned. But nonetheless, accomplished the goal the Clinton campaign aides wanted to fulfill the casting uh, of casting the apparent transparency on Clinton's vetting process in a way that made clear she was moving carefully towards the presidential run. So, good on Maggie Haberman for making it more critical than, I guess, necessary, but the thing about it is that they already had said that she was a friendly journalist who teed up stories for them and never disappointed. So here's what I think about Glenn Thrush joining the New York Times. It is incredibly unsurprising. This is the kind of journalism that they think is right. This is the kind of journalism that they seem to reward. But their own internal memos on the policy of quote check of quote approval seem to fly in the face of these exact hires. So is it a formality? Is it a formality, New York Times? Do you actually have these ethical measures in place? Or are you just doing this for the appearance of, uh, of said uh, ethics? Or does it not apply when it goes to the Hillary Clinton campaign? That's even more problematic. We don't really even need to worry about that as much if, if, it, if it is a Democratic bias because we Democrats are not in control of any part of the White House and that's what Glenn Thrush seems to be covering. But what's fascinating and what we will, will remain to be seen is if Glenn Thrush and journalists like him are not ideal, ideology driven but are access and power driven. So will we see Glenn Thrush giving the same leeway to Trump advisors, to, to Reince Priebus, to Steve Bannon, to anyone involved in the Donald Trump campaign in order to get access to those stories. Will we see that? Will we see him sending um, large chunks of stories to the Trump campaign? Will we even know if that happens? That remains to be seen. But what is obvious is that the New York Times and Politico have a significant fluidity and the people that are re rewarded with promotions and with 
uh, big jobs and big opportunities are the, the same ones who were implicated in a lot of these WikiLeaks as having a very cozy relationship with the people in the Clinton campaign. So again, I want to say and, and hedge that I understand that they have to fact check and that Jordan and I do not have, or at least you know, Jordan's a, a reporter, I am not. I, I have the luxury of not being able to do that, but there's got to be a better way. And if the New York Times is, a, is supposedly a staple for journalistic integrity and the pinnacle of journalism in the country, I mean, it, it, I don't think it is any longer, to be frank. But if it is supposed to be, then you cannot reward this kind of behavior. And you cannot re reward this kind of ethical, these ethical quandaries and these ethical lines that seem to be getting crossed.